Hey, welcome to the series of everything you need to know about Python in simplest possible way. In our previous videos, we have discussed so many important concepts and so many important methods regarding tuple, right? So in this video, we will be knowing three important concepts regarding tuples. One is immutability, another one is a membership operator that we can check a element is present inside of a tuple or not, and another one is iterable. So by using this important concepts we can understand more clearly and we can enhance our knowledge about tuples so let us start with immutability so when we are discussing about this particular tuples introduction class we have known that tuples are immutable which means when once we created the tuple we cannot change the data that is present inside of a tuple right so that we have discussed in our very beginning of the tuples so when introduction of tuples so let us go and understand how that works so let's say I will take an example which is tuple 1 here. So instead of this tuple 1, I will be assigning some values. So for that reason, I am assigning let's say 10, 20, 30, 40. I am taking very simple example in order to make you understand clearly. So I have this particular tuple and I am having the elements inside of a tuple are 10, 20, 30 and 40. So now what I will be doing is that first I will execute this. So later. Now, if I print this particular tuple 1, we can able to get the tuple, right? So now we know that in our previous video, we have seen by using index operation, we can able to get the elements of a tuple, right? So to make you understand, I will take this particular element, which is at the index 0 here. So in index 0, we have the element 10, right? So index 1, we have the element 20. So like this, by mentioning the index operation, we can able to get the elements of a tuple, right? So in our previous videos, when we are discussing list, we have seen by using this particular index operation and by assigning some other value here, we can able to change the data inside of a tuple, right? So let us go ahead and understand that works in tuple or not. So now if I execute this, so we are getting an error tuple object does not support item assignment. So unlike list, we cannot do this kind of an operation with tuples because tuples are immutable because of that reason we are getting this particular error. So by this we can able to understand we cannot modify the data when once we have created the tuple. So let us understand with list. So to make you understand I will take a very simple example. Here I am considering L1. So in this L1 list I will be considering two elements here. 10 and 20. Let's say if I access this particular uh, index 0 element, so if I execute this, we can able to get the 10, right? So if I print this particular L1, we can able to get 10 and 20. So now if I modify this particular index 0 value with let's say 100 here and if I execute this, so after that what I will be doing is that I will print this particular L1 here. So this is got executed right. So this is got executed. So now I will print L1 again. So you can see the data is got modified right. Previously without assignment this particular 100 we are getting 10 and 20 in the list. So after this particular modification we are getting the list 100 and 20. So by this you can able to understand this list is immutable. List is immutable because of that reason we can able to modify the data inside of a list after once created. So as tuple is immutable, we cannot modify the data that is present inside of a tuple after once created. So by this simple example, you can able to understand how tuples are immutable and how list are immutable. So I hope you can able to understand that. So let us go ahead and see one more important concept, which is nothing but membership. So we have two membership operators, right? One is in and another one is not in. So by using these two operations, to these two, uh, uh, these two operations, we can able to know a particular element present inside of a tuple or not. So this not only works with the tuple, this works with any iterable for that matter. So let us go ahead and understand how this membership operator works with tuples. So let's say I will take this particular T1, consider it as a tuple 1. And here, instead of this particular tuple, I will take 10, 20, 30, 40. Just a simple example to make you understand clearly. So I will execute this and this is got executed. So now what I wanted to do is that I wanted to know a specific element present inside of this particular tuple or not. So we have in operator, right? So for that reason, let's say I will take this particular 20 in 
T1. So what I am doing here is that I wanted to know this particular 20 element present inside of a inside of this particular tuple or not. So if I execute this, we are getting true. So we are getting a boolean value which is nothing but true because this particular 20 is present inside of this particular tuple. So because of that reason only we are getting true. Let's say if I give let's say 200 here, I am checking 200 is present in T1 and I am executing this, we are getting false because this particular 200 is not present inside of this particular tuple. So I hope by this example you can able to understand we can use this particular in membership operator to know a specific element present inside of a tuple or not. So we have not in right. So let us go ahead and see not in also. So I am taking this particular same 200 and I am testing this and in T1. So if I execute this it was getting true because this particular 200 is not in this particular tuple. So I am change i am using the reverse operation right so this particular in operation return true when the element is present inside of a tuple so this particular not in operator return true when the element is not present inside of a tuple so i hope you can able to understand the difference so i will take 20 here and if i execute this we are getting false because this particular 20 is present inside of a tuple as because of that reason we are getting false so this particular not in operator and return true when the element is not present inside of a tuple. So this not in operator and return false when the element is present inside of a tuple. So this in and not in works vice versa. So I hope you can able to understand the difference between in and not in with the tuples. So let us go ahead and see one more important concept which is nothing but iterable. So we know that any iterable, let's say string, list, tuple, and these are considered as iterable, right? Which means we can iterate through the elements. So these are considered as a containers and inside of this particular containers, we can have some elements and by using the any iterable, we can iterate through the elements. So let us go ahead and understand how we can iterate through this particular tuple. So we have two different approaches to iterate through the tuple, right? So one is while loop, another one is for loop. So let us start with for loop and go with while loop and understand how we can access the elements instead of a tuple. So to start with, I will start with for loop. So for element in this particular tuple, let's say I will take the same tuple which is T1 here. That is what we have used here. I will taking I am taking the same tuple here. So by using this element variable, we are iterating this particular t1 and getting all the values from the t1. So now what I will be doing is that I will just print this particular element here. So if I execute this, we can able to get the all the elements inside of a tuple. So I am just printing this, but if you wanted to do any operation, you can do those operations also. Let's say I will add all these elements by using this iteration. So in order to do that, I will take a variable which is sum here. I am taking initially sum as zero. So when once I enter into this particular for loop, I will be adding sum is equal to sum plus this particular element here. So by using this, we can add this particular element to sum right on each iteration. So this is the lengthiest method, right? We know a shortcut for this. So by using this particular plus equal to, we can actually do that, right? So I am doing this. After that, if I print this particular sum here, and if I execute this, we can able to get 100. So we will check 10 plus 20, 30, 30 plus 30, 60, 60 plus 40, 100. That is what we are getting here. So I hope you can able to understand how we can iterate through this particular tuple by using this particular for loop and do whatever the operation that we wanted with that tuple. So let us go ahead and see one more method, one more approach that we have using while loop. So let us see with while loop. So I will take a while loop. So before taking this particular while loop, we need to start with the index, right? So we can access the elements of the tuple by using indexes, right? So as this for loop is having this particular element in operation and having this uh, mechanism because of that reason, we can directly access the elements from using this particular for loop. But we don't have that kind of approach for while loop, right? So because of that reason, we need to iterate through the index only. So for that reason, I am taking index 0 here. So because index values will be start with 0 in the uh, tuple, right? For that reason only, I am taking index as 0 initially. 
so we will perform the sum operation that what we have performed in our previous iterable also so for that reason only for that reason also i am taking sum as zero so after that what we need to do we need to iterate this particular uh, tuple using for loop right so i will print this particular tuple here so that we can see right so i am printing t1 and we are getting 10 20 30 and 40 so now i will use this particular for while loop and i will mention the condition if index is less than this particular length of this particular t1 so by using this len method we can able to know how many number of elements that we have inside of this particular tuple so by using this condition i am mentioning as long as this index is less than this particular length of t1 we need to execute this particular loop so i hope you can able to understand so inside of this particular while loop what we are doing we will be adding this particular sum to this particular uh, we need to access the elements right so for that reason i need to mention the tuple name here and i need to mention the index so by mentioning this particular index in this particular index operation by using this particular tuple we can able to access each element on each iteration of this particular while loop right so i hope you can able to understand that as well so after that we need to modify this particular condition right we need to have a statement to modify this particular condition so for that what i am doing is that i am doing index plus one so by using this at some point at some condition this uh, this condition will become fails right so this index will keep increasing after one after after a specific condition it will be become false we can come after the loop so now if i execute this so we are not getting anything because we are not printing anything right so for that reason i am printing the sum here and if i execute this you can able to see the same result which is nothing but 100 so you might be having some doubts so for that reason i will take one more tuple here i will take t2 here and instead of this particular t2 i will consider 20 40 and 60. so now i will take t2 here also i am taking t2 and here also i will take t2 so why i am doing this is because previously also we have got the sum when we are printing the sum right so here also we are printing sum and we are getting the same result so you might be having the confusion that we are using this particular same sum because of that reason we are getting the same 100 so for that reason only i have modified the tuple so now if i execute this you can able to see we are getting the result which is 120 so 20 plus 40 which is 60 60 plus 60 which is 120 because of that reason only we are getting 120 here so i hope you can able to understand how we can iterate through but through this tuple and get all the elements and do whatever the operation that we wanted to do so i hope you can able to understand all the concepts explained in this video which are immutability we can understand when once we have created the tuple we cannot able to modify the data instead of a tuple i hope you can able to understand through all of this explanation so after that we have seen how we can check a particular element present instead of a tuple or not by using the membership operator so after that we have seen iterables right so how we can iterate through this particular tuple and get all the elements and do some kind of an operation with the tuples so i hope you can able to understand all of this so i hope you have found this video interesting and if that is true hit the like button in the next video we will see tuple comprehension we have seen to a list comprehension right in the similar fashion we have tuple comprehension that we will be seeing in our next video so to stay updated with my latest videos subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications to all so that whenever i upload any video you will get the notification so thank you for watching this video see you in the next one